Okay, so in this video what we're going to do is we're going to take a quick look at cross-site scripting and how cross-site scripting works. So what I did is I have a real simple demo website, and then the goal of the demo website is just to give people the fundamentals of cross-site scripting. Not really advanced cross-site scripting by any means, but just how does it work. So we've got a couple of websites that we're going to go to. We're going to go to Disney. Everybody loves Disney. And we're going to go to CNN. Because we got to get the news. So what I'm going to do real quick is there's this text right here where you can see it's a JavaScript function call. So you see what it's asking for is JavaScript colon void document dot write document dot cookie. And all I'm going to say is, all right, I'm going to paste this right over the address bar, right over Disney.com and CNN.com, and we're going to display the cookie. So we grab this text, place it right over Disney.com, and now we can see the cookie. When you look at this cookie, I know it looks like gibberish, it looks like Greek, but this is how web servers maintain state. This is what allows the web server to know who you are and where you are inside of the site. So without this, you, know, you really can't use a website effectively because every time you do something, you have to re-log in and it'd be really frustrating. So what happens is attackers try to steal this. Attackers want to get this cookie. If an attacker can get this cookie, he can impersonate you because the cookie actually takes the place of authentication. So if an attacker can capture your cookie, he can now pretend to be you. So what a lot of people see is a real basic script alert, which is what I'm going to do right here. In this case, what I'm going to do is script alert, and I'm going to put a message inside of the script box. And it says, the Redskins will suck as usual this year. That's because the guy who's our videographer is a Redskins fan, and I had to tell him that the Redskins got spanked this past Monday. I'm editing six, this out. Six touchdowns in the first quarter, wasn't that? How did that go? 35 to zip? I guess one knows how that worked. So the Redskins will suck as usual. But the problem with cross-site scripting is when you demo cross-site scripting with that alert pop-up box, people have no idea what you're talking about. They look at it and go, okay, well, you can make a pop-up box on my desktop, but what does that really mean? Yeah, so? So generally you'll say, all right, well, what if I did it this way? What if I did script alert document dot cookie? So in this case, whoops, let's put that in and get it all in there. So here's script alert document dot cookie. Well, in the first time, the script alert, the pop-up box, proves that you can control the browser. That's really what it's about. You're proving that you can control the browser. That's what the pop-up box signifies. Most people look at that and they typically say, so. Well, in this case, I'm proving, well, hey, look, I've got access to your cookie. So this means I can impersonate you. I can pretend to be you on your website, Facebook or wherever it is, or your company's corporate website. I can pretend to be you. I can impersonate you. And now when the customer sees this and they see this big blob that says PHP session ID, again, they typically say, so the impact isn't there. People really don't know what's going on. So one of the things that I've kind of learned to do is to say, all right, well, let's look at what cookie stealing actually looks like. Here, I'm not doing document uh, script alert. I'm saying document dot location. I want you to go to this website. And when you get to this website, you're going to go to a page that's a cookie catcher. And you're going to send the cookie to that page. So let's say um, I went to your Facebook page. And on your Facebook page, you've got a section that says right on my wall. So I write on your wall. And then where it says link, I would put that link that I just showed you. So when you click on a link, because you're logged into Facebook, you get redirected to the cookie catcher file. And then your cookie for Facebook gets sent to my website, thus the term cross-site. And I've injected the script code, which redirects and steals the cookie. Now when you see it happen, you actually go, well, that's stupid. I didn't see anything that happened. But if you actually look up here in the top address bar, you'll see that we did go to the cookie catcher and we did send the PHP session ID. So we really have sent the session somewhere else. Now let's go and let's look, because we've got some code that writes that cookie straight to a text file. So this file is full of stolen cookies. 
So now we as the attacker copy the stolen cookie, go to the person's website and paste it right into the address bar, and we now browse the site as that person. That's how you steal sessions. They call it session hijacking. So now what we can do is we can go and we can set a new session value. So let's say I'm going to go to uh, CNN.com, and now right over CNN.com, let me just redirect it again. So here's CNN.com. I'm going to paste in a stolen cookie, and you can see how important it is. So I'm going to paste in a stolen cookie. I'm going to hit enter a couple of times. And now when I go back to CNN.com, it doesn't look like anything, right? But what if I try to print what's the current cookie? So if I try to print the current cookie, whoops. You can now see that the current cookie is Ryan's favorite. The Redskins suck. Ryan, your Redskins suck. So we can impersonate other people. Now, one of those things that we run into, too many people see that cross-site scripting, as cool as it is sometimes, it's a little frustrating to do because it's a lot of moving parts. So what I like to do is this instead. Why don't I just take some code, and instead of making an alert pop-up box, I'll put this on your Facebook page. So now when you're surfing the page, you'll get a box that says, hey, your session's expired. Could you please enter your password so you can continue? So when the person fills this out, so when the person fills this out, it gets written to a password stealer file. And then we see, down at the very bottom, Ryan, your rest can suck. So, quick demo of how cross-site scripting works, guys. That's it for today. Hope that helps.